Now the last time we did a range tier list for the raid was during the race to world first, man. I mean, sure, Sometime. Echo cleared it by that time. I think it was around 29th or 30th of December. It's been a while. So welcome to TLF, which stands for Tier List Friday. And today we're talking about <laughs> Dragonflight range Time. DPS in the raid. Man, I'm telling you, there's a lot of new entries as like when compared to the last tier list we did for the raid. It's Ooh. bonkers, man. But there's a lot to discuss and explain here. Def definitely, uh. my man. Definitely, because if you look at any sort of depiction of any sort of ranking, whether it's sub creation, whether it's logs, whether there's different bosses, the specs juggle with the ranking more than my uncle juggled when he was drunk. But that's besides the point. <laughs> the thing is, we try to look uh, at a more, let's say, cohesive way of ranking everything, have a more balanced approach to all of the specs so that you know we don't rule out specs that are actually really good and just put like half of the specs into f tier however although all of the specs can do razagathon mythic and they do pretty well by the way because you kind of need the damage anyway it's the difference between the top and the bottom will be really high probably way higher than we expected yeah okay well without further ado let's just get into it we'll uh have some more explanation on the way but uh affliction warlock is Oh boy! It's so this is, I guess we can we can start it off because yeah. uh, um, when we when we ranked affliction last time, it wasn't looking so good. Nowadays, if you look at the logs, you're gonna see that this is probably the best range DPS so on far. Rise, I guess. <laughs> as of today, with the current logs that we have, affliction is the best range damage dealer on Razagath overall in terms of logs, right? But it it oh, oh it of course depends. It depends exactly on what your build is and what you're attempting to do. The why Affliction is probably so good at Resogeth is, is most damage is obviously coming from ads and yep. it's coming from Seed of Corruption spam, which is something that you can 100% do with your single target build. So even though you are going to be king at ad spawns, which comes at intervals in Resogeth, you will probably still be one of the best damage dealer on the boss itself because you have to sacrifice almost nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know it. It's like a super, super good with like on-demand AOE. I guess you can talk about the fact that it relies on specific conditions. You know, like you know, spe super specific boss timings and ad timings and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, then it still has a lot of competition with with the Warlocks, but overall. This is a very, very potent spec it's, for the raid. It's a big bump, and man. What do you mean? I think it was F tier last time we saw it, yeah, or at least close to it. No, no, it's it's really good right now. It's a well-deserved A tier. For now, sure, for sure. Let's get into the Boomkin, baby. Because I think um, we can safely assume, like, overall, not on one specific boss, but overall, the AoE damage from Boomkins is, like, one of the best, it's, if not the it's best. It's the best uh, and, uh, AoE. Uh, for sure, number one on council. Pro probably best DP, AoE DPS spec, period. Definitely yeah. on council is the best spec. Uh, Boomkin didn't really see a lot of changes, with the exception that all of its strengths have been... Uh, uh, accentuated and all of its weaknesses as well. Also, <laughs> yeah. So its single target is probably the worst in the game, which is so weird coming from Shadowlands where Boomkin was exceptional at dealing single target damage that would kind of flip the switch. On top of AoE too, because they, they, they did good in both departments. Yeah, they, 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 were, they, were, they were okay. But now, I mean, the, as long as you have an ad fight, your Boomkin is going to be a good asset to your team. And it's still overall really good damage. It's not like really bad, but you'll definitely I mean, feel. Listen, the truth be told, the only pure single target fight in this whole raid is Teros. Uh, other than yeah. that, you're gonna have a lot of cleave, a lot of ads, and you're gonna have Boomkin shine all over the place. So, you know, obviously, yes, it does suffer on single target, but when you have like only one boss that is exclusively that, and the others are either cleave or heavy AoE, you can safely assume that Boomkins are A tier, it's, it's baby. It's A tier, and it's funny because um, as opposed to Affliction, it's the worst spec on Razageth as <laughs> of now, worst <laughs> which range. Is, which is very interesting to uh, to analyze, but maybe on a future video to actually go into like super giga details and see who fights what and how the timings work out and the damage profiles too. For sure, sure. Not today. Let's let's go ahead over onto the Arcane Mage. Ooh, Arcane. Which in our, our um, December tier list on the, the Mythic Raid was, uh, I believe, either S or A tier. Um, I mean, it's... It's still very good. Yeah. It, just some other specs bumped up really high. And right now, a lot, of, a, a lot more guilds that are logging have different ways of approaching all of the bosses. I mean... Biggest burst, one of the biggest bursts in the game. That's most, arcane most for likely. You. Um, I guess like 
super kind of complicated rotation. Not everybody's it, like into that. It, I have I have uh, heard like excessive amounts of complaints about the com the the convoluted rotation that Arcane has, yeah. and some people might like that, some people not. You at least get rewarded for it, and that's I guess fine as well. The thing with Arcane is it's it's a weird comparison that we can have with Fire Mage, and we'll go more detail once we get to Fire Mage, but. Fire Mage probably has uh, what, Ar what Arcane does, but it does it better in terms of like overall burst and when you want your damage in. However, Arcane just has overall more damage and that kind of factors in into, you know, you just want the boss to be clear. Yeah, yeah. Well, just looking at the overall numbers from the, the latest logs on, on Mythic, it is below a couple of specs. So uh, I guess we're going to rank it into B tier. Definitely B. on the overall performance, it's performing uh, a little bit lower than Boonkin and Affliction. We'll see how it uh, performs with, with within its own class, Frost for and sure, Fire, for sure, right? For sure. But now it's time to talk about the BM Hunters, baby. BM Hunter. This is a spec ah. that is very hard to judge its its uh, value by just looking at logs because overall it, it's not seen very favorably uh, on logs. However, it is period the best single target spec in the game, not just the range. Period the best single target spec in the in the raid, and obviously you can see that on the Terras logs if you really want to look at logs. But you probably won't see BMs being very good or you probably won't come to that conclusion if you just look at any other bosses because their AoE is poop. Their AoE is kind of like, it's okay, but they're pro it's probably going to draw draw them down in overall performance. However, when it comes to boss damage, when you want that funnel damage into that one target, BM is probably the best pick for that. This is this is one important factor to, to put in into here. Even though there's like heavy AoE within the race, there's still one boss, one big boss you have to kill. And when you have a spec that can deliver on that, it's still great. This is why uh, when you see Boomkins, Boomkins don't have that funnel, you know, priority damage as set up. Sure, they shine in AoE uh, as opposed to, to a BM Hunter where, yeah, you don't have as much of a good uh, AOE or cleave, but the single target, the priority, when you want to get that boss down. Of the spec. Yeah, yeah. But still, because of this, uh, it's very, very potent, and you can see it, I would say, behind Boomkin, just in terms of like overall numbers. I mean, probably. if you look at sub creation, it's going to be probably an F tier, if I remember it's, correctly. It's, it's, it's all over the place. But if you look on Warcraft logs, <laughs> you're going to see the, the different story, right? So it cannot be, uh, just to make it clear for everybody, an F tier spec for us right now, uh, even like taking all of the data from Warcraft Logs and sub creation, the F tier spec means this spec hasn't cleared uh, Razagat still. Or it's not able to clear or it's like It's not Razagat. able, but yeah. so far all of these specs, so there's no F tiers, just, you know, spoiler, uh, or, or D tiers for that matter, because uh, we haven't like the, the D here. The D here? All right, let's move along for <laughs> D for Demo Lock, baby. Because the uh, Shining Warlock listen, spec. Man, yeah, Demonology Warlock has been super, super consistent with its performance throughout the raid. I guess... Uh, I think I think what we can say about Demonology is that it's kind of a better boomy, better balanced druid in the sense that it doesn't sacrifice that much single target. It doesn't have that much AoE, but it has, or like, let's say 80% of a balanced druid's AoE, but probably like... 50% more single target, so it's a very solid spec. If you're looking to be able to do any everything, every boss, uh, you'll probably be able to pick up a Demonology Warlock and be fine. You do have a couple of build variations where if you really want to go single target, and I think this is what most Demonology uh, Warlocks are doing on Razageth, which by the way, it's uh, demo is the second best Razageth spec. All right. Range spec. Yeah, what uh, friction uh, over there? Yeah. Hey. The, the, the Warlock Brothers. You take another portal and you... you you go in on that single target and you blast the boss, man. Yeah, but it is punishing, right? So there's yeah. just a lot of a lot, a lot of shit to cast and it's punish punishable. The, the Nether Portal rotation. Uh, that being said, um, yeah, I, I know it's like paired up there with Affliction as the best DPS, uh, the best range DPS for Razaget. I believe like it on Diurna. Is it like the second best? Uh, Diurna is pure. Uh, oh, no, no, best, no, it's, best. The, it's the best. Okay. The best range on Diurna. It, it, it's the best. So. I guess like overall, we can still place it in an it's A-tier. It's an A-tier spec. Like A-tier, it's like they're all super good specs. They're really good at something specifically. They might be bad at other stuff, but this is probably what you want to have in a in a tier list. And an A-tier is like, you're not just good at everything because that's just boring. Yeah, that's, and, and, and it's stupid, okay? Destruction Warlock up next. 
Um, have you seen the Kurok logs lately? Oh my god. Uh, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, the 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 havoc cleave situation. I, oh, I'm actually kind of happy that destruction retains its, you know, two target cleave, uh, extravaganza, Estier. I don't know how it kind of conflicts with arms there, because arms is also known for that as well. But as far as destruction goes, you will melt double bosses or double adds or anything like that. It's okay in AoE. But likely where it will shine is probably, you know, the, the intermissions with Karak where you have two ads at a time and you really want to cleave them down. It's really good for that to get past certain mechanics best. as well. And you do have good bursts as well. Yeah, it, it is the best. And this is why, guys, it's very difficult to, like, make a raid tier list because, yeah, Destruction Warlock is S tier on Kurog. And if you take a look at each individual boss and see how specs perform, it's going to paint a totally different picture, right? So this is why we're taking, like, the overall theme of the, the logs and sub-creation data and try to rank them now uh, apart from kurok i guess um destruction isn't like the the best is kind of like subpar with the other uh compared with the other dps specs as well and i don't know how many locks we have on on uh Razaget, but it wasn't like too much uh or maybe i think was, it's there was one with like a million pis or something it's like something it's still, ridiculous and it's still like okay that. now with that that didn't really blow anything out of the water so destruction is still suffering a little bit from the damage output yeah but so that's probably what's keeping it in staying in tune with like the a tier specs yeah, okay okay so, so i'm i'm placing it in b tier. yeah b, I, I think b is fine yeah b tier b, b tier it is because again overall you don't see as uh as, as many numbers as uh when compared to the others that on are on a tier now let's talk about the uh, Fire Mage, baby, because I was expecting Fire Mage to finally be like dominant or, well, it was kind of dominant for like a, a very long time, but still, I was kind of like hoping for it because it feels so good to play and it's the finally thing is, there. The oh. uh, Fire Mage is actually a, a, a well-designed spec for a raid. And it's uh, what I kind of wanted to com compare it with Arcane. I think uh, the reason why Fire is probably a little bit lower than it should Maybe um, the fire has actually been picking up steam a lot in the last couple of weeks. We've seen it with our own fire mages as well. For sure. Now, most probably people who are playing fire mage are playing in the latter stages of the raid and probably not farming the first bits because I haven't been able to find like good logs for the first side of the raid for fire. However, fire does what fire does well. And when you have combust, you can take care of things. Ki fire kind of does what Balance Druid did in Shadowlands where you just pump a lot of damage into either a specific cat or a specific boss like Razagat's shield. And you just melt through that phase and pass through the yeah, uh, they're very to, useful the, for that. to the next phase. Yep. That's really good, uh, but uh, that's kind of it. It kind of stops there, which is kind of a shame uh, since, you know, I mean, it's fire. Yeah, cause, uh, this is the thing, right? Uh, if you look at the damage profile of fire, it's like pretty much consistent AOE and single it's target. It's just ignite. Yeah, uh, it's, it's ignite all over the place. However, the numbers paint a pretty rough picture when compared to other specs, even even with like uh, arcane and some some others you're gonna see it's lower man uh, and at this point uh fire mage i don't feel has any problems other than just pure numbers like if it's tuned a little bit higher it can do amazingly well it has the potential to be an a tier spec where it excels at something very specific that yeah. you want and for the rest of it, you probably get a different spec, which is kind of what we're seeing the theme here. Yeah, I mean, if you look at like logs for for uh, Razaget or Dierna, you're gonna see it's like uh, one of the worst specs over there. So uh, we're gonna place it in C tier, uh, regardless. Yeah, it's kind of um, needs a little bit of love. It just it just needs a little bump in its numbers. I I guess that's the only the only thing. Everything kind of uh, boils down to that. Now, uh, Frost Mage, on the other hand, um, again, <laughs> this, is a, this is an interesting case. Again, again, another cleave spec similar to Destro, where you can see like like Kurog like being one of the bosses Frost Mages shine the most because cleavey stuff. And we also see some interesting this logs is... where um, Icy oh Veins God. was like the, almost the entire fight, if not the entire fight. Yeah, now. with with the talents, a thermal void, and uh, there, there's another one that uh, reduces your Icy Veins cooldown when you crit with spells. Uh, when you have those, you have a high uptime on Icy Veins, pretty much close to 100%. That is very <laughs> that is very conditional, though. That is very conditional of you not having to move a lot, that you're not having to cast a lot, because even though it's a simple it's a simple spec, it's maybe the simple mage spec at the moment, where it's straightforward, it's Frost Bolts, Ice Lance, and then you complement it with a couple of uh, Frozen Orbs here and there, you will suffer from downtime. It's kind of, I'm, I'm thinking kind of like Outlaw, 
but without Outlaw's actual damage. <laughs> because Outlaw kind of suffers if you're not, you know, putting in the work to constantly reduce the cooldown. And that's the same with Icy Veins. The more you're not hitting the target, the more you're going to suffer. I can tell you, Outlaw never suffers for any downtime, that's for sure. But uh, that, that being said, it's still like super consistent DPS. Uh, definitely performing better than fire uh i guess it's a respectable b tier yeah this, it's, it's uh, kind of there in this regard um yeah again guys uh you will see it shine in fights like turok but uh in other fights i don't know like razaget and stuff it's not as good right so very difficult to like place everybody in, in its own spot over here unless we like look at specific bosses but you know we'll we, we work with what we have now sure, time for, for sure. marksmanship Hunter, Mark's I, I remember this was also either an A or an S tier it in was, December. Was it was pretty high. It's kind of similar to Frost Mage in a sense where it doesn't excel amazingly at stuff, but it does do a bunch of stuff really well. Um, you can still have really good boss damage even with AoE talents, and you'll probably always have access to stuff like Volley, which outside of Terra's fights is always going to give you like reliable add damage and things like that. It's still really good. One of the best for council-like fights where it's just like constant AoE the entire time. But outside of that, it doesn't really shine a lot. DPS is big, but if, if you're not going to be like, oh, we want Marksman for that, it's probably going to be a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you can you can see some some locks where Marksman can have like higher DPS than some of the, the ranking, the specs on the B tier here. Uh, but, you know, a lot of these specs right now have their own niche situations where they really shine off. Marksman doesn't really have that. Uh, in, in, in a lot of ways, but I still think it's a respectable B tier. It's, it's a good uh, spec. Probably, it's a spec. yeah. I mean, um, not better than Arcane, but definitely a lot more. Uh, in, in the mages, there, just yeah, keep between cozy. the mages over there. Uh, the, the the locks show that the performance overall is uh, better for Marksman than Frost and Despro. So I guess uh, a B tier it is. Okay, Evoker time, Devastation. Now this, I think last you like, time we yeah, you have like. it. Oh, it's it's a fun spec. Um, last time I think we had it in A tier, but now it's one of the best range DPSers in the raid period. Obviously, it's really good at AOE and probably one of the strongest things. And this is gonna be funny once we once we finish the tier list. It's uh, that it matches with another very strong uh, DPS ah, yeah, spec yeah, yeah. In, in the raid in terms of uh, the, both of their cooldowns being two, two minutes. But that's besides the point. Um, what probably Devastation excels at is what probably Beastmaster excelled at in the past is it's a kind of mobility. You can go from A to B, you can mitigate a lot of mechanics. You can glide, which obviously Demon Hunters do. You can zip zap around the, the battlefield as well. You can grab people, which is actually a pretty good thing, especially for certain fights. I know a lot of people like Evokers on Razageth, where you can just bring people past mechanics and move them around with Rescue. That's pretty good. Not to mention, its rotation is not too punishing, but it can suffer from other issues. I mean, sure, you can talk about the, the fact that the Evokers are, are are widely known for being like the one of the squishiest, oh, not the squishiest oh, class specs in the game, and that can be a problem as well. Or regardless, like when you look at uh, the the talents, how the builds work, you know, there's not a not a lot of versatility there. But that also means that there's no sacrifice for single target or AoE. It's just big ass pump damage all over the place. On Razaget, if you look at the logs, you know, specifically for the ads, ad phases, you're going to see a lot of fucking damage from Devastation. It is, I guess, overall one of the best. And I we can talk about our first S tier for yes, today. Yes, it is, it is <laughs> actually an S tier, surprising. I mean, we kind of expected this before Dragonfly release, but not really. because it, it took the, its time, man. Yeah, it, it, it needed a little bit, a little bit of oomph for yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Uh, what about Elemental Shaman? Uh, this, is, uh, this is a hard one because this is an example of a spec that doesn't really shine a lot. I mean, you have about, I think there's about three builds that you can go with that really help you a lot. You don't really have a lot of things that punish you but you don't really shine almost anywhere sort of like really cool animations and stuff. yeah i've seen i've seen the the data over there and it kind of like looks to be one of the specs with the lowest dps this is pure numbers when compared to to others uh it, it can still deal dps if played right so people who are experienced with elemental shamans would definitely make it work and you know if you're talking about your average joe uh, maybe just getting into a, a mythic or just progging on heroic or whatever you're gonna say elementals like top the charts no problem if played right however if you look at purely the numbers they dish out with like parses that are getting close to perfection 
um, uh, you're still gonna be behind like <laughs> like average oh, average yeah, uh, player. It was and it, it was weird. So this is like very similar to the the fire mage. I don't see big like major issues for elementals. It's just a, a numbers game. Yeah, here. I think it's a clearly a numbers yeah, game. Yeah, like sure. like uh, like fire. But uh, we have to place it in in C tier just purely on the performance uh, elements. So uh, elemental shaman elements. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean it's not it's not the worst spec. It's not the bottom tier. It has more parses on Razagath than destruction has, for instance. Even though the damage is a little bit lower, it's probably more reliable. It's safer to play, so it's yeah. still a good spec. Speaking of power infusion, let me help you out with this. Here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let me let me let me put Shadow this here. Shadow Priest. And, and now you understand why both these specs are doing fine. Oh, oh my god. Now like, talk about I, it. I, I wanted to talk mention, about but it. I didn't want to spoil it. So the, the reason why devastation is such a monster is because power infusion, I think Jesus, man. On those. the on the latest, there's there's like a spreadsheet going around in the community where it says who benefits the most from power infusion. And the, most of the time it was on holy decays, but I think if devastation right now takes the Might cake. Might take the cake, yeah. It, it's a totally different situation, and this speaks to why you want a Shadow Priest, because sure, Power Infusion is good for Devastation and ranks it up, but you give Power Infusion to Devastation. If you're not giving to Devastation, you're definitely giving to a bunch of other people, and this can, uh, this normally should probably show on your meters at a, as about 5 to 10 extra K DPS, which is massive. Yeah, yeah. Shadow is basically the best range DPS in the raid, and the yeah. second best Overall DPS in the raid as well, because we also have melees. Uh, looking We've been around, having right? melees so. topping the raid for like to the to top three, four spots for like almost a month and a half, and now finally we're breaking yeah. into with some range. Yeah, the, I, I guess like the the fact you know the changes that Shadow Priest received basically bumped it up in all avenues, and it's pretty nice to see because this is a spec we both love, and it's not the easiest spec to play, oh, and no. this is this is one of the things, right? This is one of the examples where Blizzard did it right. Listen. If you want to pull it off and play it properly, you're going to reap the rewards. And this is pretty cool. Not to mention the build diversity is like just just results in an amazing damage profile. And you can like see it like performance being super high on, on Razaget. You can see it super nice on Teros. Although you can talk about the single target being just a tad lower below. It's the kind best, of like a better balanced druid in yeah. terms of like the damage profile. It does pretty much everything that balance does, but with a much better single target, obviously, which is why it's also a tier higher. It brings PI, which is an underrated, maybe for most part, it's an underrated spell considering that it also gets PI as well. You're never going to have to worry about not having PI, but you do bring a lot of benefits to your team with mass dispels, with all of the stuff that Priest does as well. Grips, it's it's the finally the best ranged the in the game. Empiric Embrace, all, all of those are combined, <sighs> plus the damage. This is uh, this is pretty much it. So yeah, based on the logs right now, this is how it's looking for the raid. Definitely different than how we were looking at it on the uh, in December uh, when we did it. It's quite a spin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shall we look a little bit at the sub creation? Um, so it's a little bit weird the sub creation because it's mm, kind of sees affliction very low and demo very low, which I personally don't agree with. If you really look at turn fights, obviously since affliction is the best spec at Razageth, we we uh, couldn't really rank it too low. But since it kind of suffers yeah. in the other side of the fights, we couldn't really put it into S here, even though it's the best spec at the with the last boss of the raid. You could probably think about it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the thing, right? If you look at like sub creation and compare that to like Warcraft logs as well, it's gonna be a, a totally different scenario. So this is why when you're talking about range DPS, it's always like ideal to take it boss by boss, damage profile by damage profile, and then you know check it out. What, what are we what are looking at now? So, so, okay, uh, let's look at the one for Razaget, okay? It's the sub-creation for Razaget. Check out the F tiers on that, okay? All of them. I mean, <laughs> this, I mean, what? Like more than <laughs> half of the specs are F tier. What are you talking about, Shadow Priest? It's yeah. weird because um, the way it works is this is very cold, raw data. It just takes the numbers from the latest logs and then, you know, ranks them, the DPS and all of that. It's a lot of math going around. I tried to, to look at it, but I fell asleep. <laughs> but the point is, the specs are actually way better than you might believe. Even if you look at our tier list, you're probably going to be a much better DPS than you're ready if you play an elemental. If you know what you're doing, then yes. people just picking up S tier specs because they're flavor yeah. of the month. Listen, guys, uh, this is like just for pure infotainment. It's not something that you should make a decision on what to play or what is working. All these specs have killed Razaget on Mythic and they do amazingly For well. Sure. So if you have fun with any of these specs, just master it and you'll be fine, okay? And uh, thank you, Patreons, for supporting all of our content. It's been a blast. You're supporting the tier lists, the reacts, all of the videos we pump out with the dungeon guides and 
class, guys, as well, yes. working on it. Trust me, we're working on make, it. Make, making hard. all of this possible. Thank yes. you very much. You're definitely helping us. And if you're dear viewer, like our content, you want to see more, and you want to support us even more, check the link down below in the description. It'll take you to our Patreon page and you'll find a lot of stuff there that you might be into. All right, shut up now. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.